we have the first behind the scenes teaser for Stranger Things season five. It's titled On Set of the Final Season. This was posted 10 hours ago, I wanna say, and I would have a video out way earlier, but I actually flew across the country today. I live in Georgia, I'm now in LA. I flew across the country because this week on Wednesday, I'm actually going to the Cobra Kai season six world premiere and be able to watch the first two episodes there. I've already seen the first five episodes through press screening, so I will have a review of that and my reaction to every five episodes or all five episodes later this week. Those are pre-filmed, so stay tuned for that. Lots of Cobra Kai content coming this week. Um, but I haven't watched this yet. I've had people text me, message me. I've seen like out of context, you know, screenshots on social media, but I haven't watched this yet. So I was gonna do a quick reaction, then pause, do some notes, come back and do a breakdown of this behind the scenes teaser for Stranger Things season five, because again, happy eight years of Stranger Things. Before I do this, hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell and comment down below your thoughts on this little behind the scenes teaser. Very excited to see how it actually plays out, if there's a voiceover or not. And uh, if you wanna watch all of Stranger Things with me, you can do so on my Patreon. Uh, I have commentary tracks for every single episode of the show from season one through season four. I also have exclusive reaction videos and live Q and A's, all that jazz. Um, but yeah, it's time to watch this behind the scenes Stranger Things five teaser. Let's do this thing. Hell yeah, ladies and gents. That logo I will never get sick of seeing. Um, lots to process there. I'm gonna take a breather, watch that again, take some notes, um, and I'll be back to talk about this in a few seconds. A few moments later. I just took three pages of notes, watched this thing in slow motion over and over. I'm not kidding, I got a notebook right here. Um, so let's watch through this thing again, slow-mo, and break it down. All right, so in the opening shot, we can tell they're in the upside down, and on the slate, it reads 501, meaning it is the first episode, which I think this is actually gonna be the very first scene shot for Stranger Things season five. On Stranger Things Day last year, they released the script description of Will in the Upside Down. What we're seeing here looks like what they were describing in that script. And I feel like them putting this clip first just signifies that. The next thing we see is Castle Byers, which was teased in one of Ross Duffer's Insta posts, but us seeing Castle Byers immediately after the shot has me thinking, yeah, these are probably those Ep1 flashbacks. We know Noah Schnapp was next to a young actor and they're probably gonna CGI Noah's face onto him. We'll talk more about that later, but for sure going back to Will's time in the Upside Down from season one, something we've all been clamoring for for seasons now. We get a quick shot of the Duffers being the Duffers, and then Caleb McLaughlin, who plays Lucas, starts to voice over saying, we're halfway through filming, which we are. Made a video about that recently, I'll link up above. This next shot's interesting. We see Dustin riding his bike in the cemetery, and this lines up perfectly with the early photos we got in like January or February of this year, where we see Dustin at Eddie's grave, visiting him, paying respects to him, and it just, lines up that Dustin's riding his bike there to visit Eddie. Perhaps it's the anniversary of his death. We know there's gonna be a time jump. That's gonna be sad, and we'll talk more about Dustin later. Not in the best light, unfortunately. We get a quick shot of Hawkins High School, which I've actually been to. I visited it twice. I'll put the link to my filming locations vlog up above. And then in Hawkins High School, we get a shot of the four kids in school from left to right. We've got Dustin, Mike, then Will, and Lucas. And they've grown so much since that first season, which dropped eight years ago today. But it's crazy to see them all at this table in school. Last we left off in season four, Hawkins was in ruins. The Upside Down was merging with the real world, and so we can assume, and it's been pretty much all but confirmed, that the time jump is happening. So our gang's in high school, and they're getting ready to take on whatever season five may bring. In the next shot, we see the whole gang at the WSQK radio station, which you can tell because if you look in the back left corner, there's a Pink Floyd poster, and just the pattern and pipes on the walls line up with all the Ross Duffer behind the scenes posts from the WSQK radio station. And if we go left to right here, we see Joyce, which we haven't really gotten any posts of her in the Ross Duffer post, so it's nice to actually see her. And you know, she's in season five. She's the mother of Stranger Things alongside Steve. And so it's good to see her back. Then we've got Will rocking an outfit that we've seen like 30 times from various angles. Nancy looks great in that pink dress. And it actually reminds me of one of the Ross Duffer posts from a while ago where we were like, it looks like she's wearing the dress Eleven was wearing in season one. And if you zoom in here, it certainly looks like a callback to that as well. Then we've got Jonathan next to her on the couch. He's wearing a shirt that says, 
the fall. I didn't have the time to do the research. That could be a band or something from the 80s, I'm sure. Someone let me know in the comments down below. We're gonna skip past Dustin and save him for the end. Looking to the right, we've got Steve rocking that outfit from the day one post on Raw Stuffers Instagram. Then we've got Lucas and Mike. But if you look at Dustin, he's messed up, guys. It looks like he just took a whooping. Like this man just got beat up and it unfortunately was probably at Eddie's grave. More evidence as to why later. In the next shot, we see vines in Hawkins' lab, which leads to the Rainbow Room. That's right, it seems like we are going back to the Rainbow Room. And again, if you follow along with all of Raw Stuffer's posts, this checks out. Then we get a quick shot of the Stranger Things Season 5 logo. To that, I say hell yes. I want to get one of those light up red fives for my background so badly. And then we get like a drone shot of these massive buildings that hold the sound stages and sets. Like you can really tell the scale of Season 5, by far about to be the biggest of any of the seasons. We can see what looks like a hospital room set or maybe even something from the first shadow or someone's bedroom. I couldn't really tell what this is. It was a really quick shot, but let me know your predictions down below for what set this is. Then we get a shot of Steve and Robin together on day one of Stranger Things season five. And this is a major throwback to January when Ross Duffer posted a picture of them marking the beginning of filming. And the next shot's a huge one. We're going back to the tunnels from season two. This is something that's been heavily speculated for a while, ever since those previous gifts drop of Dustin, Steve, Nancy, and Jonathan riding around in a car with a pole in the middle, which we would later come to find out is an antenna in Steve's car. And it looked like they were in the upside down because the title of the file was McCorkle Farms. So things are really starting to come together now with all the behind the scenes posts we've gotten. This next shot, we see someone applying what looks like fake blood to some tendrils or ropes. It had me thinking maybe this involves Vecna somehow, but it goes to show how much care they put into the practical effects in the show. Then we see Millie Boy Brown being filmed documentary style, talking about how she was 10 when the show started. She's now 20 for the final season. And it's crazy how not only we the fans have grown so much since the show started, but the actors themselves have literally grown up. And so it's been quite the journey. And again, eight years of Stranger Things today. What a show, what a journey it's been. We get a really quick shot. It looks like there's a truck back there and a van maybe, but I couldn't make out whose vehicles those were exactly. Potentially a new hopper truck. Then we get Sadie Sink walking around in the costume department, talking about how she's savoring the moment. She even grabs her Max outfit from season four, getting all the nostalgia flow in there. We had a quick shot of Noah Schnapp reading a script, highlighting something. He says he thinks it's going to be the best season yet. We then see a lot of bikes, again, some walkie-talkies and Twinkies. The attention to detail to pay homage to the 80s off the charts and it always has been. This next shot really excites me because it's actual confirmation of one of the directors, that being Frank Darabont, the man who directed The Green Mile, the man who directed The Shawshank Redemption, which is the number one movie on IMDb, and an early on showrunner and director of The Walking Dead. He knows what he's doing when it comes to directing and bringing him on is huge. The rumor is he's directing two episodes, I want to say Eps 3 and 5, I could be wrong. But the cat's out of the bag. This is Frank Darabont, so all those rumors are now truth. We get a quick shot of Eleven, and it looks like she's in the WSKK radio station, which seems to be the common location. It's gonna have a huge role, guys. I've been saying that for a while. We've got so many shots there from behind the scenes. It's going to be the new Creel House, the new Starcourt Mall, WSQK radio station, book it. Then we see Charlie, Heaton, and Natalia Dyer, Jonathan and Nancy, and what's great about them is they've actually been dating in real life for a while now. They both look so good having a sweet little moment on set while they're not filming. We get a quick shot of Kayla McLaughlin as Lucas and he voices over saying, 100% the wait will be worth it. And then we get a shot of Lou Max. And you can see under that black coat, it looks like Sadie Sink is wearing a hospital gown, which makes sense because Max was in a coma the last time we saw her and she might not be out of that anytime soon. Then we got Jamie Campbell Bauer getting ready to get his makeup applied. You can see some remnants of the Vecna makeup on the table. He says season four is big, but season five definitely feels bigger. And then we cut to this shot of the upside down. It just looks massive in scale. I can't state that enough. It looks humongous this season. They're really going all in on the size of Stranger Things season five. And I say hell yes to that. Let's go out with a bang, making this the biggest season yet. We then have Cara Buono, who plays Karen Wheeler, getting ready to get her makeup applied. And I'm thinking there's a shot of her. We saw her in the Stranger Things broadcast channel a while ago talking about how Karen Wheeler gets to do something she's never done. Could she be the one vanishing? Because we know the speculated episode title for I believe the second episode of the season is The Vanishing of Blank Wheeler. Could it be Karen? Who's to say? Then we're back in Hawkins High School as we see our main squad walking down the hallway. It's worth noting Dustin's neck of his shirt is ripped and his face does not have makeup applied to look like he just got beat up. So the neckline of that Hellfire Club shirt is just worn down. It's likely that he's been wearing the same Hellfire shirt all through high school because he hasn't been able to get a new one. Rest 
rest in peace Eddie, of course, someone who probably would have provided those, and Hellfire Club might not even exist anymore, so he could just be holding on to that memory, paying homage to Eddie. This could potentially be a special day, like I said earlier, maybe the anniversary of his death, and so he ripped that shirt out of the closet to pay homage to his friend. But it's interesting to see our squad walking down the hallway like that. It's just the final season. Again, they've grown so much since the first season, so it feels nostalgic, it feels bittersweet, but I'm ready to watch it all go down. Then we got Linda Hamilton. That's right, Sarah Connor herself from the Terminator films. We don't know who she's playing, and I don't know when we'll find that out, but she's wearing like a trench coat and a beanie, so it was probably cold when she showed up to her trailer whenever they filmed this, but we still have no clue what character she's playing. My money is on that she's somehow involved with the WSQK radio station, because again, that seems to be such a huge new location. Then we see Priya Ferguson, who plays Erica Sinclair. Finn Wolfhard talks about how he's excited to have scenes with the original four, and he's in the Wheeler basement, which is like the ultimate hangout spot from Stranger Things. He himself sounds very nostalgic in this moment, and I couldn't help but feel that way when I watched it. Then we got a money shot of the original squad of kids putting their hands in the middle, stacking them up on top of each other. This of course, we've seen on Ross Duffer's Instagram posts, but it looks like they're at the picnic table behind the school that we see in season four when Chrissy's with Eddie. And we'll talk about this location again. It could be the new hangout spot for all we know. Gaten Matarazzo is then seen walking on a set talking about how this is home, and he's looking at this set lovingly. We see Joyce behind the scenes, and then we cut to Holly Wheeler's room with Nell Fisher as Holly. There are lights flickering, and if you pair this with the episode title leak, The Vanishing of Blank Wheeler, and the paparazzi photos of Holly Wheeler with Vecna, it has me thinking, that blank has to be Holly Wheeler at this point. Like, why would they go through the recasting process, getting Nell Fisher, and then why would she have scenes with Vecna? Also, we can see her hair is wet, and oftentimes when that's the case, characters usually have just come out of the Upside Down. Think Nancy in season one when she comes out of that little gate from the tree. Think Eleven in season two's opener when she comes out of the Upside Down through the little gate in the school. Oftentimes when characters go through gates, the squelching sound effect, as Netflix says, happens in they get that slime on them, so that could be the case with Holly. Then we have a shot of a new character with Erica. We've never seen this kid before. Who could he be? Maybe this kid lives in one of these farmhouses or it's his property, but again, looks like they just wanted to introduce a new character, and we technically have our first look at Erica in character. We haven't gotten her in any of the BTS posts yet. Now this next part hurts. We see Dustin at the cemetery, but there are some jocks there wearing their Hawkins High School Letterman jackets, and if we put two and two together, it seems like Dustin's going to get beat up when he visits Eddie's grave by these jocks. They're still going to be making fun of him for representing the Hellfire Club because it has a bad perception in society. People thought Eddie was responsible for all this stuff that went down, and they're anti-Hellfire Club. They think it's this devil, Satan-worshipping club. It's not going to look too good for Dustin here, I don't think. We get a really quick shot of a night shoot, and I'm thinking maybe that's the McCorkle Farm stuff. We have a really quick shot of Jonathan pointing at a projector from a previous scene. We see Nancy and Mike together, a rare sibling moment for them. I mean, I forget their siblings sometimes because of how little scenes they truly have. Lucas and Mike are seen hauling ass down a hallway like they're being chased or urgently trying to, you know, get some message delivered, maybe. I love the setup of a potential new awesome duo in Stranger Things with this next quick shot of Robin and Joyce. That's an unlikely duo, but that's what I love about Stranger Things. There are so many characters at this point, they can spice things up, and people have asked me, hey, what character grouping would you want to see? I never thought Joyce and Robin, but now that I've seen this picture of them together, I'm like, yeah, I get it. We know Sean Levy is a longtime producer and director of episodes, and he's back to direct at least one episode in this final season of Stranger Things, and we see him in this next shot with Joe Keery, who plays Steve. Worth noting that Steve has a little bit of a nick under his eye, like maybe he took a hit from somebody, but he's gonna be okay. And shout out Sean Levy, the man's a beast. He's directing Deadpool and Wolverine, which comes out later this month, stoked for that. We then see Steve driving his car with Jonathan and seemingly Dustin in there as well, likely Nancy, because based on all the information we have from the behind the scenes posts and the previous gifts, they're gonna be a group of four this season. I'll talk more about that in an upcoming shot, but Steve's antennas in his car, they're definitely gearing up to film some of those tunnel scenes. If you look behind a Duffer brother, you can see what looks like a wall painted like a tunnel from the upside down and like a blue screen overhead, so they could very well be gearing up to do that in a sound stage and then just add a bunch of CGI after. We get yet another shot of the four main kids, and it looks like they're wearing different outfits, but they're at this park bench again, which seems to be the new spot behind Hawkins high school, but you'll notice Will walking away from the group. He's likely having his little Vecna tingle where he can sense his presence, or he's about to go into one of his little blackout moments. You know how it is. One of my favorite shots in this entire behind-the-scenes teaser is that Hopper is back, baby, and he's on what looks like a hunting stand or something. He's wearing like a beanie. He's got a big old beard, and he's got 
this big jacket on. It looks like he has a rifle to his right and like a duffel bag. So my first thought was maybe he's hunting for food. Hawkins could be depleted with its resources and so he has to provide by hunting. But then I also thought maybe he's on like patrol somehow. He's involved with the military presence in Hawkins and has volunteered. Who really knows, but he does have that military background, of course, and he was the chief of police of Hawkins at one point, so Hopper's gonna get his hands dirty one way or the other. The man does not mess around. Whatever he's doing, I'm intrigued by. I could not make this person out, but someone gets absolutely thrown, yeeted, if you will. It could be Vecna, couldn't really tell, but someone's getting tossed. Harkening back to earlier when I was talking about the new group of four, this shot provides us a better look at them. From left to right, we've got Nancy, Jonathan, Steve, Dustin. They all look so good together, and Stancy or Jancy, one of them will reign supreme this season. Who's your money on? Let me know down below, but they all look damn good. Who's this random person with a rifle? I couldn't tell you for money. It could be some rando from the military, or maybe the Russians make a return season five. Vecna's back. We knew he was returning, and we get our first look at him. There's no redesign seemingly, but that could change. They obviously could conceal that from us. I wouldn't be shocked if Vecna in his practical makeup had a change of design later in the season. Maybe he starts to regress and looks scarier by the end of the season, but again, this is the classic Vecna look we can see right here. That's not to say this isn't a flashback though. We know they integrate those a lot, so maybe this is a scene of Vecna face to face with Will Byers during his time in the Upside Down. They're gonna be retconning a lot. Stranger Things did that in season four, so this could be a situation where we just see Vecna in flashback form, and they haven't revealed a redesign yet in present day. We then have young Will in flashback form for sure, because he's wearing his outfit from when he was taken to the Upside Down, but he's getting slow lung? Free falling? I don't know what's happening. Maybe this shot of him is immediately when he gets taken to the upside down and he just falls in from above. It looks like he was maybe trying to climb a tree and fell or who knows, but it would be cool if like we first see him just falling in the upside down. It's also worth noting that when season four came out, Noah Schnapp posted a picture of him in a harness. So maybe they filmed something ahead for season five with him or maybe he was just foreshadowing because he knew that he was gonna be flying around in the final season. And the money shot of this behind the scenes first look on set for season five is Millie Bobby Brown's 11 doing her iconic 11 pose at the camera. She's in the upside down, something's going down. We've seen her in this outfit on set before with a bloody nose, so who knows what she's up against. Probably Vecna if I had to guess. And then the trailer ends with the Stranger Things 5 logo and to that I say, Hell yes. It's been eight years since Stranger Things came out. This behind the scenes teaser was awesome. It fed us. It didn't give us like official footage, edited footage, but it gave us enough. It gave us a tease, a taste of what we can expect. And I think that we can fully get on board with them doing a documentary for this final season, the behind the scenes making of it. I say hell yes to all of that. This was awesome, it got me enthralled. Again, apologies I didn't get this video out sooner because I was flying across the country, um, but yeah. That was great. Stranger Things season five, bring it on. I'll be making content covering it to the end of the line and it's my most anticipated thing ever. I'm not just saying that. More than any other movie or show, Stranger Things five is my most anticipated piece of media ever. And this behind the scenes featurette, if you will, got me even more amped. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below and hit that like button. Subscribe to that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. It would mean a lot. And if you want to watch Stranger Things with me, you can do so on my Patreon. I have commentary tracks for every episode. Your support means a lot. But I got tons of cool content coming this week, including Cobra Kai reactions. You're not going to want to miss that. So if you only watch Stranger Things content, you should check out some of my other stuff. Until next time, I'll see you on the other side of the Upside Down.